This is Howie at Cedar Creek Homestead. I want to welcome you today to Porch Time. We've been calling this segment Coffee Time each week, but I have a Coffee Time ministry that I do. It's a devotional each week, and uh, I'm going to start back putting those here on Cedar Creek Homestead channel, and I'm planning on airing those on Sundays. So um, I may call it something different, but I've, I've gotten things kind of confused with some folks that like to watch the uh, what I call coffee time. And coffee time is a, a time that I use for a devotional. So uh, if you've been one enjoying that, I'm going to be bringing that back and we'll probably have that on Sunday afternoons. Uh, probably be at 7 o'clock on Sunday nights and uh, offer a little bit of a, a religious uh, type of videos, a devotional about God's holy word, and I hope you enjoy that. But in the meantime, we're going to start calling our Tuesday time, Is uh, and I may mix in some about the Bible. I can't live without the Bible. I can't live without God, so I'll be mixing in some things here on uh, Tuesdays about God's word also. But um, this week's subject I wanted to talk about was growing meat on your homestead. As you know, um, meat is a vital source the most, for most folks, it's their main source, meat is, whether it's chicken, pork, beef, or rabbit, or venison, uh, bison, whatever it is you want to eat, fish, but meat is your main source of protein, and so because of that, um, a homesteader needs to be able to raise their own meat, if at all possible. Now, there are people that homestead that are strictly vegetarians. Now, I don't know how they survive and make it. I've got a, some relatives, that, uh, an aunt anyway, uh, and her husband, that they only eat vegetables. They quit eating any kind of meat and go totally vegetarian. Hey, if that's your lifestyle and that's what you want, that's fine. But most homesteads grow and raise their own meat. And that has been a lifestyle for homesteaders to grow meat. And today I wanted to talk about my favorite, which is beef. And then I want to talk a little bit on another one that I feel, the second one I feel is the most easiest and probably the best for homesteaders or preppers. But beef, about anybody that has a little acreage could grow them a beef. Not a cow herd, but I'm talking about one animal to uh, to eat, to butcher once a year. A beef would feed a, in a family for a year enough meat. We have ours when we butcher one. We have steaks and we have the rest of it ground up into hamburger meat in one pound packages. So um, most stuff that my wife fixes a one pound package works fine. She fixes spaghetti, chili, something like that. Now if you have a large family, you may want to have it in two pound packages. But the one pound packages, I'll make a pot of stew and I like hamburger in my stew. I'll use one package, one pound package. If I'm doing goulash, I use a one pound package. If my wife's making us hamburgers, uh, she'll use a one pound package. If my son's here or we have other people, she'll thaw out more meat you know to, enough to to do what we need to do if she's making a meatloaf of course she'll use more meat for a meatloaf she usually makes pretty good sized meatloaf but the point I'm getting at we do the one pound packaging and of meat then we have our steaks uh, we don't worry about roast and a lot of stuff like that but it's what you like and if I, we want to roast and we don't eat roast real often but if we do my wife will go down here to our supermarket and buy a roast. When she go, usually will go to the store once a week. And when she's at the grocer, she'll pick out a roast or something like that to eat. To eat. So, just a thought for you is having your own beef. I know there's pork and chicken and all these other things, and I just want to talk today about beef. And uh, we may get on some others later on, but today, for the sake of time, we're just going to talk about beef. Uh, raising a beef is a little complicated because first off to get your starting animal to start off with is an investment so 
a lot more expensive than going and buying chickens or rabbits or anything else like that. Um, or even pigs. Beef is going to cost you more. But my favorite protein source is beef. Second to that would be poultry. But beef, and that I like rabbit, I've ate bison, all that stuff. But, but beef is my favorite. And there's nothing like a good old uh, steak, a fresh steak of an animal that you've raised at your home, or good old fresh hamburger meat, in my opinion. Now, people, first off, you got to start off with your animals. So I, it's an investment that you have to make. you got to go buy. Now, if you're going to go to the cell barn or somewhere like that and buy you an animal, I'd recommend buying a heifer because there is a price difference in a heifer. Heifers don't grow as quickly or as big, but they do grow and they do well. So your investment would be a little bit lower. Or you could even start off with a bottle calf. The problem with a calf that you're going to raise on a bottle is you got to know your business when you get started. Go talk to people that are raising them on bottles because you will oftentimes they will get scours and die on you. So be very careful about raising a bottle calf. If you had goat's milk, I've had very good success raising baby calves on goat's milk works very very well the powdered milk stuff if you buy it and you're going to mix it up and feed it buy a very good high quality stuff and probably get some that's medicated um, if you add in this is one idea you can add in a little bit uh, like a cc or so in each bottle when you're starting out of like uh, uh, la 200 something like that in your bottle. They all also have shots you can give them. Uh, There's just an expensive stuff. I cannot think the name of it right now, but it's pricey. But you can buy that and when you get a bottle calf, give them a shot of that so they don't get the scours. If they get the scours, they'll die. Baby calves around here at the cell barn will bring at least $300 right now. If you find a Jersey or Holstein calves, they don't bring as much. So that's a, another thought. But off, but you have more the bone structure of a Holstein is so big, and a Jersey is hard to fatten up. You have to think about that. But if you're not set up to feed a baby calf at least twice a day, morning and night, every day, for at least 60 days is my recommendation. You could go even further into 90 days. But if you're not prepared at first, it's like taking care of, almost like taking care of a child. You got to take care of that baby but you can do it. Now one thing with a bottle calf is they will follow you around the farm. They'll get attached to you and they'll ball for you and want you. They will meet you at the gate when you go out. So that is kind of hard to eat that type of animal. So it's something to think in your mind. Um, we raised one one time years ago. On, we raised several on bottles but I raised this one that was such a pet and he was, a, he was half Bramer and half Holstein and he grew into a beautiful looking animal but we did not have the heart to eat him and it was years ago when I was younger in high school my little brother that's 10 years younger than me he loved to eat at McDonald's so I told him what well, we, we ended up selling the calf because we couldn't have ate him our family needed the meat but there was not no way my brother would ride this little calf get on him I mean, he got big, and you could just hop on him, ride him. If he heard you, if he got out, or or he was across the pasture, and we go, uh, I'd normally go, sook, sook. Well, my brother would say, zok, 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 and then with a Z. So we named him Zok. Well, we went to sell him finally, and my little brother, he, uh, when we get to the cell barn, uh, there's a man in a white overcoat thing. He was a buyer. And I was just teasing my brother. I said, that man up there buys for McDonald's hamburgers. And my little brother loved to eat at McDonald's. So um, I told him, I said, uh, that man will probably buy our calf because he was wanting to know, you know, who, where I thought he would go. And I said, it'll probably end up as a McDonald's hamburger. <laughs> but sure enough, as luck would have it, the man ended up uh, in the white coat. He ended up buying uh, Zoke. Whether he ended up as hamburger or not, I don't know, but um, my little brother, he was, um, 
kind of torn about eating at McDonald's uh, after that time. But anyhow, uh, so think about that. And if you got children and they get attached, they might have trouble eating a bottle cap. Now, if you get something bigger, say you get a six-month-old, and that's what I would recommend, buying a six-month-old animal. Uh, you got to have a pin, something to hold them. I see people that will tie them out occasionally, but you got to have a pretty gentle animal if you're going to tie them out, like they'll do a 10, 15-foot uh, lead rope and put a halter on them, and they'll tie them out. I don't like that. That wouldn't be my preferred method, but you need something fenced in. You could fence it in with electric, but you probably need a little lot to start off with, some kind of a wooden lot, metal lot, something that, you know, is small enough that you can feed them in and get them up if you need to. And then the rest of your property, if you got an acre or two or more of ground, you could put electric fence, solar electric if you want to. If it's to where you could, you could plug up to your house electric and put a sure enough electric fencer, which really works good. But you do need a little pin of some, a little lot, a cow lot to uh, get them started. Don't have to be fancy. And if you get to feeding them, they'll get pretty gentle if you're feeding them every day. Now, some folks won't totally grass-fed. That's your choice. I'm just saying if you fed them some grain, they will gentle down. But if you got an acre or two or four or five acres or whatever, that animal most of the year can eat for free. And it'll serve as a somewhat of a lawn bore. Get your grass ate down. And I would supplement mine. I, I like beef that has been grain fed, supplemented with grain. I'm not talking about where they just put grain in front of them and that's all they eat. I'm talking about one that's raised on grass. In about 60 days before you uh, butcher it, you put it on corn or a corn mixture, chops, uh, maybe sweet feed, so it'll eat more of it. And you get that dude rolling fat. And you can tell when they start fattening up. Their tail back there, they'll get kind of some little rolls on the back of their tail. Their brisket will get heavy here. They'll start really looking good. Um, their ham, you know, backside will start filling out. Um, they're, they'll have no sunk-in spot. They'll really start looking good. And I, you, I'll get one to where it will eat uh, 25 to 50 pounds of feed every day, besides all the grass or hay that it can eat. And I'll do that for about 60 days. Now, first, when I first start, it may be just five pounds a day. In the next few days, I'll up it and up it until I'm feeding them 50 pounds a day of feed if they'll eat it. All that they'll eat, plus eating the grass and stuff. That's the way I like my beef for about 60 days. Some want all grass-fed. I have ate both. We have raised both. I did not care as much for grass-fed beef that's just strictly grass-fed. My preference is when I get a steak, I want it marbled. And that means you have some fat in it. If you get a ribeye steak, that's my preferred, is I want some marbling in that steak. And uh, so if you're going to get that, you're going to have to grain feed them. And grain will certainly put the weight on the animal, get them fat and looking good. When I have hamburger meat, now, I do not like, like you go to the store and buy a hamburger, and it's half fat. So you, you buy some of that meat at the store, it tastes good, but you'll buy a patty, a pound of hamburger meat, and when you get through cooking, you've got a half pound of meat and a half a pound of liquid, which is water and grease or whatever. So I don't like that, but I do want some fat in my meat. So when I throw a pound of meat in to make stew, I'll fry that up. I want it to be where it's got enough oil coming out of it itself that I don't have to add anything extra. Um, it's okay if you do, but that's just what I prefer, that it's got enough fat, but I don't want to have to add fat from other animals or anything into it when it's being processed. That's what they do at the store. They add a lot of uh, stuff that you wouldn't have ate otherwise, but they grind it up and put it in the meat. One thing with raising your homegrown meat, you know where it came from, and you can uh, uh, I, you, you, you know it ain't been eradicated, you know uh, it's not no pink slime, it's nothing, no coloring added to it, it is your pure beef that you've raised. <clears throat> so I like that, I like to know where my meat is coming from. One thing I think that about a two year old animal is best, so if your family ate beef and you had, you know, where you would eat a whole beef each year, you might want to look at 
having you a second one coming along. One thing I want to tell you, if you go buy one at the, okay, you say, okay, I got me a little lot that I can put him in, or her, and I've got some land, I can put electric fence, I got all that under control, I'll go buy me a six-month-old animal. Don't go buy a crazy one. They'll hurt you. You'll try to load them, and they'll hurt you, or they'll tear up your fences. They'll hurt you just because they're trying to get away. They're, it's not that they don't like you. It's not that a cow or a calf will set in its mind. I'm going to hurt that man. It's just that in protecting themselves and trying to get away. I've seen a video a while back of a homesteader that had a uh, beef and was trying to load it, and it, it went over the fence and tore up his nice fences he had. Um, it was crazy when he got it. And I don't know about his reasoning that he got that. Maybe someone gave it to him. I don't recall. But I see folks go to the sale and they'll want a beef. And they'll buy a crazy animal because it's cheap. Well, there's a good possibility that animal's going to be um, tougher because it was so crazy and so stressed out. And also, you should have something that's an enjoyment that you would enjoy raising. You know, one, it's crazy or trying to get you. We had one one time we fattened up, and we never could get him up for a long time. And finally when we did, we kept him in the lot, and we fed him about 60 days and butchered him. But that dude would shake his head and want to get you. I mean, he was just crazy. And I felt like his meat was tougher, and I thought it was because he was so stressed out. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but he was tougher whether that was the cause of it. But you get you a gentle animal, one that you can take a bucket of feed and lead anywhere you want to. You don't have to worry about them hurting you and that kind of stuff. You can raise you some really good beef. And uh, I like that beef. It's what's for supper, <laughs> for dinner. Uh, beef is just one of the best things you can have. And homegrown beef, uh, to me, is the best quality that you can get. So what we raise right here, we'll raise this one each year. Now, there's all kinds of methods now. Now you have methods. People are going and buying them at a farm when they're at birth. Then they raise them up for them, and then they turn around and sell them uh, later on. They'll, they'll not sell them, but they'll butcher them later on. So they'll buy it. They'll come out and pick out a baby that's on the mama. They're telling the farmer to buy it. And I'll sell you so much. I'll pay you so much more when it's beef size. They know the farm and they watch it. Now around here, people would laugh at you crazy if you tried to sell something like that because everybody has cows and stuff, and it's so easy to get a cattle. But most ranchers are going to do right, and most are raising properly, so there's no need in worrying so much about that but you do want it raised right and when we raise it right here I know what's been fed to it I know how it's been treated uh, we try not to use any hormones uh, we don't use any hormones and uh, if I don't, I don't get one if I've had one at sick and it had to be vaccinated I I don't keep that for a beef um, I'm just picky over it I want a good animal it don't have to be my prettiest animals the black carcasses ones bring the most so we sell those and I'll usually keep something that maybe had a white carcass or maybe had a tiger striped carcass because when you get to eating that animal you that carcass is not going to make the any difference it still bleeds red and the meat's still red and um, that part's not really going to matter but you can go to the cell barn you can buy you an animal or go look on Craigslist, that's one good source, there's other ways, but find somebody and get you a good animal and raise that up. Like I say, it can be a heifer, That there's no problem with, with raising up a heifer. And uh, when she gets big enough, then take her to the slaughterhouse and get her butchered. And uh, we'll fill up our freezer each year with beef, and a beef will last us, we give some to my folks, and we give some to a few others that we know. Sometimes you can work out a deal and sell half of it. I know folks that will do that will raise them on. They mostly graze them on grass that they have, which is free food, basically, because you might as well eat that grass up. If nothing else is, if you got a place that you're having to brush hog or mow every year, why not put an animal out there and let them eat it down? And then you sell half of the beef to somebody, and uh, then that recoups your expense on your part. 
if you don't need a whole beef you know some people won't eat a whole beef in a year and I the meat to me starts getting kind of uh, age taste I don't know how to explain it if it gets more than 12 months old so we try to cycle ours out and get a fresh one each year if we have meat left over we cook it up or we'll give it away to people because we don't want it getting old and getting to where it don't taste good but in about a year's time if the meat ain't used up by then but if you keep it in the freezer at zero degrees uh, you can be five below or five above in your freezer, but in that range, uh, perf zero being perfect, if you store it at that temperature, it'll last a very long time. But anyway, uh, just one idea there, my favorite meat is uh, beef, and uh, put on here what your favorite protein source is. Comment and let me know what your favorite uh, protein sources if, if it's beef or if it's pork or poultry or whatever it is that you like or maybe you're a vegetarian if you are tell us about that tell us what you do for protein if you're a vegetarian I know uh, my aunt says she eats a lot of beans for uh, um, and stuff like that in place of eating protein beef or stuff like we would so uh, I just couldn't make it if my doctor told me said you got how are you got to get uh, quit eating beef well I'd go find me another uh, doctor because uh, I'd certainly uh, won't eat beef <laughs> but uh, anyway uh, we have a little heifer here that has not bred yet and it's about the end of our breeding season and she's also been nursing another cow there's a cow or oh, I got several cows got calves but she's nursing one of those cows that cow's pretty gentle and she uh, I will come up behind her and nursing her and she's uh, now she's over two years old so um, she's the right size she'd be great as uh, she's uh, pretty she's uh, I just hate it because she's a heifer but if she's gonna keep nursing a, a cow here uh, you know every time she's around her why you can't have that so I'm gonna get her up here and feed her for about 60 days and we'll probably turn her into my next beef and uh, but and there will be nothing wrong with it. That meat will be just as good as uh, any other source of beef. I mean, whether it's a steer or what. I will say this: if you're going to get a steer, um, it would be best to get. If you, what I meant was, if you're going to get a beef, I would not get a bull. I would get a steer. Get one that's already fixed and already ready to go. If you have to castrate it, or band it, or whatever, and you're not used to doing that type of procedure it could get complicated and uh, if you try to castrate them or have a vet come out that's just more added, added, added expense so I'd recommend to make sure you bought a steer or a heifer and by the way some people will go buy an old cow and fatten her up put her in the lot and feed her for about 60 days and just have her totally ground up in hamburger meat if you use a lot of hamburger meat that's another idea you can do uh, sometimes I've known ranchers that they have a cow break a leg she's real healthy and everything otherwise if she just broke this leg and they were you know she can still get around enough to get in the stock trailer they'll haul her to a, a slaughter place and uh, the meat processor will butcher her up and uh, they'll eat them that way I had a kit little heifer that was crippled up after she'd had her calf uh, she couldn't breed back no more and she was crippled and we fattened her up and we um, had her butchered and there was a little damage on one quarter in on her where the rib eyes was and there was a little damage there the uh, butcher told us when he got through he said uh, there was a little damage there and whatever had happened to her to cause her to get injured there was some there so that meat was you know discarded but it just you know they can tell you wasn't something you'd want to make ribeyes out of anyway uh, but anyhow just a thought there you go to the cell barn sometimes there'll be a cow that ain't quite right or um, something but they're not sick you know I wouldn't want to buy a cancer die cow or I wouldn't want to buy a cow that had been being doctored or an old bony cow I'd buy something that looked decent and fatten them up and go that way but anyway I appreciate you watching here on uh, porch time and um, airing this on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. I also have cattle talk at 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursdays and then on Saturdays at 7 o'clock we have uh, this week on the homestead which is just an overview just some 
what we've been doing this week on the homestead. So if any of those videos interest you, we'd certainly appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed, would you please subscribe to our channel? We're trying to grow our channel subscriptions, and we'd be honored and privileged to have your subscription. And we appreciate you watching today. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see you next week here, 7 o'clock p.m. next Tuesday for Porch Time. God bless you. Have a great day.